What is up, everybody? Sysadmin Sean here with another Sysadmin news video. Uh, that's right, in case you haven't heard, which I'm assuming you all have by this point, ESXi Free is no longer a thing. I'm going to take these headphones off because they drive me insane. Um, so that's a big issue for a lot of home labbers or folks that are trying to learn these skills and maybe don't have the money for VMUG or any sort of situation like that. ESXi Free is no longer available. Uh, this affects me specifically, so I have to go out and grab some ISOs as fast as possible so that they don't uh, disappear um, via my uh, connections, so to speak. Uh, that way I can keep making videos for you all about Proxmox migrations and other options like that. So I'll put in a link down below the, the VMware article, but I'm sure you've seen it on Reddit many times already. The next thing is I wanted to talk about how things are going with our environment, our real production environment where I work, and our process of evaluating other options. So as of right now, we are still on VMware and right now there is no plan to change, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't be evaluating. So what we're doing right now is we're evaluating quite a few options. We've looked at Nutanix, we've looked at Proxmox, we've looked at X, XCP, XNGCP, XN, we've looked at that one. We've considered Hyper-V, we are looking at Verge, we've looked at Harvester, we've looked at OpenStack, we've looked at um, OpenShift, I think is the Red Hat one. Uh, we've, we've looked at all of these different options and we're building up different use cases. Now, the first thing I'm gonna point out uh, that a lot of these vendors like to hide or you know they don't really mention it, one-to-one -one parity is not gonna be a thing for anybody if they're switching off of VMware except maybe Nutanix. Nutanix offers almost everything that VMware offers to a degree. It's again, it's not one-to-one -one parity, but it's probably the closest option without aggregating a whole lot of other tools into your wheelhouse. Um, that being said though, you pay the, the Nutanix price as opposed to the VMware price. So it's really gonna come down to how much, how much does Nutanix cost? Do I have the equipment for Nutanix versus how much is VMware renewal going to cost me? And is my equipment up to date here as well? Hmm. Um, for situations like Proxmox, it has a lot of great features we like. It's missing some stuff we don't like, like the lack of Veeam backups. We like to use Veeam for our backups and restores and, and the object-oriented backups that Veeam's let us, do, let us do, do with SQL and Active Directory and file level restores and things like that. That's not to say that Proxmox backups don't work great. We've tested them. They do exactly what they say they're going to do. They restore an entire machine and you can do file level restores, but it doesn't feel like there's a way to cleanly do a file level restore directly into machine without really having to think about it. Veeam makes that super simple. And I know Veeam is on the roadmap looking to see if they can work with Proxmox and I really hope that that relationship grows. But for right now, that's, that's not an option. Um, Verge, really cool product, looks a lot like Proxmox, but you can brand. Uh, one of the big selling points about Verge is the tenant option. So you can essentially cram all of your resources together into one cluster and then start building resource pool tenants. And those tenants can even have security compliance recipes built into them. So all your firewall rules, all of your data limitations and things like that, specifically like NIST 800 or certain kind of HIPAA regulations or PCI regulations, they allow you to isolate your resources in such a way, or they say they do, that you're able to, to build all these different environments and give those out. So let's say we're working with researchers and they need a specific secure environment to do a very specific subset of research, but we don't want to buy them equipment. We've got all this equipment, but we also don't want their VMs touching our VMs and we don't want our VMs touching their VMs. So we can just give them a tenant, AKA a resource group as VMware would call it, and isolate it that way using the tools that Verge already has. So that's really cool. Um, Verge's backup structure is more of a backup the, backup the environment, not so much backup a system, which you can do, but they're like backup all the systems, backup your networking config, backup your cluster config all in one go, and then just keep taking backups. And then if you ever need to restore, just pull one of those in. And of course they, they promote a backup forever architecture, which is cool, but then you're just getting into flags on flags on flags on flags for files and you never really know where the original is anymore. And if you lose your metadata, ugh, could be bad. But again, we haven't really got to flesh all that out. We're still in the early stages of testing that. Um, we didn't care for XCP at all. That one did not meet any of our, our criteria. 
uh, from what I've gathered from my team. Uh, they've been doing an amazing job researching these options. And I'm doing a lot of that research here for the home lab, but I'm pretty sure my home lab is gonna stay Proxmox. And then most of the other options are kind of, if you can build it yourself, if you have a DevOps, if you can kind of roll your own and you feel comfortable doing that, that's awesome. Now, one really big stickler in all of these options is if you're running Horizon VDI. Uh, Horizon VDI is one of the best products out there, I think, for virtual desktops that you run on-prem. I know they have cloud options and things like that, but the on-prem is, it just works. You configure it once, and once you learn how to configure it that one time, it's an amazing product. Nutanix has something similar, though I've never used it. Uh, Proxmox doesn't really have something like that. It has some tools that you can kind of cobble together to get something close, um, and they offer linked clones and things like that, but there's a lot of features that we really utilize within Horizon as far as isolating who can get in and tracking user sessions and things like that so that we can we can keep that environment protected that are maybe missing from a Proxmox point of view. Uh, Verge uses a third-party broker, uh, so you gotta get another product with Verge for VDI, which that's just part of it, especially since VMware Horizon is technically gonna be a third-party broker when you really think about it since they're splitting off. Um, and then the other products really didn't have a VDI solution that we liked. The other option we're looking at there is Azure Virtual Desktop and Windows 365. We use Azure, so we figured we should at least give those a test. So there's an interesting kind of multi-session type um, VDI environment available for your linked clones. And then of course they have persistent desktops and we are looking into Windows 365 to see how that goes. I'd like to also do a demo of Windows 365 personally. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to afford that anytime soon, uh, mainly because of this. So since folks were asking for a lot of stuff like how do I migrate a machine from VMware to Proxmox? How do I migrate a machine from Hyper-V to Proxmox? I've ordered two more hosts for my data center. Uh, one will become another Proxmox host so that we can do proper Ceph clustering for the storage because that's really what I want to try out. And then the fourth host will be our demolition host. It's going to have VMs on it that we need to migrate. And we're going to go over some different ways to do those migrations. Some are really easy but require downtime. It looks like almost all of them require downtime. But I'm betting, I'm betting I can also use something like a, a V to V tool to move them hot or move them with like a minute downtime as opposed to turning it off, exporting it, migrating it, importing it, converting it, turning it on. That's a little bit more involved process. Um, but those videos are coming as, as well as more videos related to HPC uh, deployments and things of that nature. So those are on the way, but that ate up quite a bit of extra funds for me right now. So probably no other purchases for any other videos for the time being. Um, but that's about it for this video. ESXi free is gone. So sorry. I hope you're all looking at different options for your environments. If you don't feel like VMware is going to meet your needs or you're going to be able to afford VMware. Um, we don't even know what our, our renewal is yet. We're still waiting on those numbers. So we can't really even begin to make an accurate judgment call. Um, if, if again, if Reddit's to go by, it's gonna be impossible for us to afford it. But I don't wanna trust the internet and what random people are saying without, again, hearing from my vendors and my resellers and the folks that, that help us and get us the products we need, because that's their job and they, they wanna try to keep us as a customer, I would assume. So we're not gonna, we're not gonna just say we're jumping ship. That's not what we're doing here. We are evaluating products due to a change in the market and that's just part of, of IT. Now, I might sound a little flustered as well. That's because of uh, pretty much what happened to me today, which will become a probably a sysadmin struggle video called What to Do When You Make a Mistake. So that's going to be real fun. Um, but basically, the gist is admit it and try to fix it as quickly as you can because anything else just makes you look kind of crappy. But that's it for this one. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed what you see here. And we'll see you in the next one.